welcome back to another video here on free will photos today we're going to be looking at using presets to get our photos up and going so you don't have to really think too hard about stylizing them this is a great way for you to get your photos edited and out into the world now before we get too far into the content if you find value at all throughout the video smash the like button if you're new here consider subscribing because i do release content quite regularly especially about on one photo raw now if you are considering picking up on one photo raw either as an upgrade or you're going to pick up a new license to it consider using my coupon code freewillphotos20 it'll save you some money when you check out let's jump into the computer and take a look at what we can do all right so here we are inside of on one photo raw and as you can see i just got a bird that's in the grass there's nothing very interesting about this particular image First thing that I'm going to do, like I always do, and I recommend uh, that you do as well if you're working inside of Photo Raw 2024. If you're on an older version of Photo Raw, then this will still work. You just won't be able to use the Brilliance AI tool. Everything else that I do, you'll be able to use. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on Brilliance AI. And if you're using an older version of On One, just use AI Auto. It's about the same not quite the same i don't want to downplay it but it's pretty close to the same now this gave me a pretty good result here is what i came into the editing bay with and here's what i got so far now i do think that the photo is a little too yellow for a base edit so what i'm going to do is click brilliance ai and i'm just going to pull down on my color here to get that back more towards the blue uh, or the cooler look that was originally in the image. And that's important just because I am going to be using presets. So they're going to add color in as well. And I just want to make sure that the color that I'm adding is going to complement the overall image and not get too muddy or too much of any one color. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and minimize Bruins AI because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to click on the effects tab and come over to the presets pane. Now, if you are new to on one, and maybe this is hidden, so depending on how your version of on one is set up, if you come to the lower left hand corner, you'll see this little show hide left pane, and that's going to give you your preset pane. Now, you have to be inside of the edit module or develop module, edit window, edit bay, whatever you want to call it. You have to be in there for the presets to show up. But once you're in there and you click this left pane, you'll have two tabs, presets and filters. Uh, and there is a way that you can apply presets in the browse, but we're not going to go over that today because we want to be able to manipulate these on the fly. So one of the first places that I want to start with this image, just because he is or this is a red bird and i also have all of these leaves that are kind of yellowish or whatever is using a preset pack called fall harvest and in here there's a lot of warm tones and things of that sort so i think that this will work i'm going to go ahead and hit the little box icon there so i can look at the previews uh, in a larger capacity on my screen and get a quick glance at what could be done with this particular image so at first glance i think i'm really enjoying this last option here so i may go with that um so yeah let me just go ahead and click that and it's going to load through but you'll see over here in the effects pane all of these effects they start to apply now if I find that this is way too heavy handed for me. What I can do is just pull down on the opacity slider here. And when I pull down on this opacity slider, reducing the strength of all of these effects. Now, you may not want to do that. And this is why we're in the edit module when we're applying the presets, because presets are a great place to start, but sometimes they overcook the photo or sometimes they undercook the photo and you want to push them a little bit more. So it's important to know how you can get to pushing those. So what I'm going to do is turn off this glow effect and you can see that has a huge impact over the entire image. So that is a big part of this look. And 
I think I want to leave that because I really enjoy what it's doing there. But let's turn off the dynamic contrast. The dynamic contrast also is playing a huge part in this particular effect. So I'm not going to turn that off either. And then channel mixer, which is also playing a huge part. So what's cool about this is if I turn off the channel mixer, I get this dynamic glow effect. And that could be its own look for this particular image because I am kind of digging that. Now, if I turn off the dynamic contrast, it just looks like a big blurry blobby mess. And I'm not a huge fan of that. But with the dynamic contrast turned on, I do like what it's doing. And then of course with the channel mixer. The real power of working in the way that I'm doing right now is snapshots. So I'm just going to create a snapshot of the glow and dynamic contrast. Now, mind you, I didn't actually change any of the slider values yet. All I did was turn off and turn on these individual tools. So I'm going to hit new snapshot and we'll just call this green look because everything looks way more green than it used to. If you go uh, with the before, this is what we came into the edit window with. And then this is what we have by just adding a glow and a dynamic contrast. And then, of course, we have the actual channel mixer look. And if we turn off all of these, you can see the channel mixer, it kind of muddies up or desaturate, uh, desaturates the photo. So I believe that all three of these are necessary for the overall look. But let's take a look at the channel mixer here. Um, and before I get too far, let me just go ahead and give this the fall look. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you name your snapshots as long as they make sense for you and your own recollection. Now that we have that renamed, I can make changes here. And if I mess something up, I can always go back. And that's the beauty of working with snapshots and uh, presets. Now, what I want to do is take a look at what's going on in this channel mixer. So on the red channel, it looks like we are pushing the reds a little bit. We reduce the blues. Let's go to the green channel and it doesn't look like anything happened on the green channel or the blue channel. So everything that is impacting this image is purely on the red. Now let's see if there's a blend mode applied, which doesn't look like there is. It's set to normal still. So we'll close that back down. Uh, so maybe this is a little too strong and we want to reduce the look. What if I pulled that down just a little bit? So it's simple things like this that allow us to create different looks really, really fast. So now I'm going to just create another snapshot and we'll call this fall look two. And now I think I'm done with everything that this preset is going to be able to offer me. So what I can do is come over here to my presets again. And you know what? Maybe I want to try out a black and white preset. So I'll click black and white modern. That's going to give me my black and white overlays here or options. Let's go ahead and open up the multi pane window. This is just a really great way to work with presets and look at them. Now that I have this up, I can kind of just filter through here and see if anything like stands out to me. Now this photo probably won't do us any good in black and white, but I'm just trying to illustrate the point of how you can work with presets to get looks on images really, really fast. And notice I'm not doing any masking. I'm not doing any complicated, uh, you know, color matching or anything crazy like that. So this is perfect for someone who just wants to get a look on their image. This look, I really love the way that this particular uh, photo you know, you really hone in on the individual bird here. Now, what I want to see, yeah, there is a vignette. So I'm not a fan of this particular vignette just because it's like all rounded over here. This is where I can do my own thing. And all I have to do is come over to local. And if you have been watching videos on this channel, you already know what I'm about to do. So, you know, that's exciting. Uh, Except for I got to click on the mask and now I can hit him to get my masking bug, uh, which all I'm doing for those of you who aren't may not be as familiar is I bring a local adjustment on and I create my own vignette. It gives me way more flexibility to do what I want to do. So I'm just going to click in the center here. 
after I selected my vignette tool and the shape is on center. And then I'll pull this in to the subject matter and I can pull the feathering out, kind of had a, uh, a mental break there. Uh, you'll pull the feathering out and you can see, I just have way more control now because if I wanted to, I could rotate this mask and the vignette tool, it allows you to move the mask, but it doesn't allow you to really shape the mask the way that you want it to be. And I really enjoy just using a local adjustment to make my vignettes. It's a personal preference, but I do recommend it to everyone. At least try it out. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but now I have my vignette. So let's just jump back to the zoom tool so I get rid of that overlay. And if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see what I've been able to accomplish in a very short amount of time. So hopefully this particular video was helpful to those of you who are looking for ways of sampling different looks in an image using the snapshot tool, as well as just clicking on some presets, making whatever you need to make possible by starting with a preset. If you got questions, let me know down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear how you're using presets to edit your photos. And if you want to get in contact with me, come over to my website, freewillphotos.com, and you can fill out the contact form, or you can send me an email at freewillphotos at gmail.com, and I will get back to you. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.